Hey everyone, Charles here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to take a look at a topic from the S-Core blueprint, that being SVTI-based VPNs. SVTI meaning Static Virtual Tunnel Interface. This is actually a newer, more simple approach to VPN configuration that uses a tunnel interface. And that means we don't have to use crypto maps with access control lists. Let's jump in and take a look. You can see the topology on screen with a couple of routers interconnected, very simple. I'm going to configure a site-to-site -site IPsec VPN, and much of this will look the same as what we've previously done in our site-to-site -site VPN video. Router 1, you can see, is at 10.10.10.1. Router 2 is at 10.10.10.2. So here on Router 1, let's start with our IPsec Phase 1 configuration. So under Global Configuration Mode, let's say Crypto. ISA camp policy. I want to give that a policy number, which I'm just going to make one. And if we look at our contextual help options, we see those same attributes once again. Remember our Hegel mnemonic, which outlines all of the attributes we need to match on each side. The hash, authentication, group, lifetime, and encryption. So let's say hash SHA-512. Authentication, pre-share. Let's say group 14, lifetime, I'll set that to 3600. Let's say encryption, AES 256. Let's configure our pre-shared keys now. So let's say crypto isocamp key. I'm gonna make that very simply Cisco. We want to identify our remote peer by saying address. And the address is, of course, 10.10.10.2 because we're working from router 1 at the moment. Let's say do show crypto isocamp policy just to make sure everything's in place. And that all looks good. Let's go over to R2 now. And we'll do something very similar. Global configuration mode. Crypto isocamp policy 1. We want to say hash SHA-512. Authentication, pre-share, we'll say group 14, lifetime 3600, and encryption AES 256. Let's configure our pre-shared key. Crypto Isocamp key, that was Cisco. And for the address, we want to point to router 1 at 10.10.10.1. We'll say do show crypto ISA camp policy, and everything looks good there. Now we can move to our phase two configuration. I'm going to jump back to router one, and we can say crypto instead of ISA camp, we want to say IPsec. We want to configure the transform set. We need to give that a name. I'm going to make that remote in all caps, and we have to define one method for encryption and one method for authentication. You can see all of those options in our contextual help. I'm gonna say ESP AES 256, followed by ESP SHA 512 HMAC. Now we can set our mode by saying mode. Again, you can see we can do transport or tunnel mode. This time we wanna choose tunnel. Now we want to create an IPsec profile. So let's say crypto IPsec Profile followed by a name. I'm going to make that very simply IPsec in all caps. We attach our transform set to this profile by saying set transform hyphen set, and the name of that was remote. Let's go over to router two and do the same thing crypto IPsec transform hyphen set. The name of that is remote ESP AES. 256, ESP, SHA-512, HMAC. We want to set our mode to tunnel. Now we want to create our profile. Crypto IPsec profile, name is IPsec. Now we want to attach our transform set by saying set, transform hyphen set. The name of that is remote. And now what we do is we create a tunnel interface and add our IPsec profile to that. This is very similar to creating a normal GRE tunnel where we would set a source and destination address. So let's go back to R1 
And under global configuration mode, let's say interface tunnel zero, that gets us under tunnel interface configuration mode. You can see the tunnel state change to down because now we've created a virtual tunnel. Let's say tunnel source to set the source to our local interface IP address, 10.10.10.1. Tunnel destination, we wanna set that to of course 10.10.10.2. And now we need to say tunnel mode. And if we look at contextual help, you'll see some familiar options under there. If we were creating a normal GRE tunnel, if you're familiar with that, this is where we would typically set that to GRE mode. In this case, we want to say IPsec. And contextual help indicates that we need to specify IP version 4 or IP version 6. Of course, in our case, we're using IP version 4. And finally, I'll hit enter. We can set our tunnel protection mode by saying tunnel protection. If we look at contextual help, you'll see that we can use a pre-shared key or we can use IPsec. We obviously want to choose IPsec and you can probably guess we of course need to specify our IPsec profile that we created by name, which was IPsec in all caps. And I did forget the profile keyword. So I need to say profile first before I do that, followed by IPsec. So now when we hit enter, we see a message letting us know that Isacamp is on, the tunnel interface is up, so that all looks good. Let's go to R2 and let's do the same thing. Let's go under global configuration mode, interface tunnel zero. And one thing I just realized we forgot to do on R1, let's go back under our tunnel, we're still under there. We didn't give this tunnel an IP address. So let's say IP address, and we can make that anything we want. I'm just gonna make that 50.50.50.1 with a 24-bit subnet mask. So almost forgot to do that. Back over on R2, we've created our tunnel. Let's give it an IP address here. Likewise, we'll make that 50.50.50.2 in this case with a 24-bit subnet mask. Let's say tunnel source, that is 10.10.10.2. Tunnel destination, 10.10.10.1. Tunnel mode, we want IPsec and we want to indicate IP version 4. We want to set our tunnel protection to IPsec. We want to call out the profile. The name of that profile is IPsec. We'll hit enter. We're going to see a similar message letting us know Isacamp is on and the tunnel is up. If we break out of here and we say show IP interface brief, we're gonna see our tunnel interface. Let's say show interface tunnel zero. And this is gonna tell us that our tunnel is up. The encapsulation is tunnel. We see our source and destination address. We see the address that we assigned it. 50.50.50.2 in this case, because we're on router two. And we see that we are using IPsec. So all of that looks good. If we break out of here and we say show crypto session, we see our peer listing over UDP port 500. Our peer is router one at 10.10.10.1. UDP port 500, by the way, is used by IPsec based VPNs for establishing those secure tunnels. We also see that our session is in the up active state, which is exactly what we would want to see. That's all for now. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment, or sharing this video with someone you think may enjoy it. That's the best way you can support what I'm doing. If you'd like to support the content I'm creating even more, please consider checking out the membership links found in the video description. I hope you found this content useful, and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.